so it's about, I don't know, six o'clock in the morning. Cats are bouncing around, having a good time. And uh, y'all wonder what you're looking at. Well, some people know what this is. Some people don't. You know, I get up in the morning and I have to take my medication every morning. And uh, for people that don't know what this is, this is methadone. Uh, it's the liquid kind. This is what the doctor will give you if you're being a good boy and you can take it home. If you've been sober for so long, uh, the, the the clinic or or the doctor or whoever you have will make sure that you get this so that you can take home and uh, you have your own prescription at the house so you don't have to go to the doctor every day because in the beginning of sobriety, and I'm going to go ahead and explain this to you, this is why you got to understand, you got to really want it because this will help, but this is the this is the end to the beginning. I hate to explain it that way, but it is it's the end of your it's the end of your drugs and the beginning of your life. And then you don't have to take this forever, but you're going to take it to get off the drugs. I promise you you're going to want this. This is going to help you especially if you're going through those opiate withdrawals. Um I know it's kind of like washing one hand with the other, but you're going to understand that this is going to help you live life uh, it's going to help you live life normally every day uh, instead of doing the drugs and chasing the drugs and being a part of the drug culture and doing all that bullshit. And it's just, it's a nightmare. Um, this is another kind of a nightmare, but it's an easier nightmare to deal with. That is a end to the beginning. So <clears throat> uh, I have to take this. This is 150 milligrams. I take one a day. Uh, I get a two week supply. I have to go to the doctor every two weeks. And uh, this is part of my treatment program that I do. Um, I go to counseling once a week and I go to therapy every two weeks. And uh, I've been working very hard on my sobriety for the last two years. Uh, last three years, I've been sober, sober. Two years, completely sober. Th the three years is the beginning. The first year of it was very rough. It's always rough. Anybody who knows getting off of opiates, uh, it's very rough. Okay, and so what I got to do, it has a, uh, it has a child lock, I already, already popped it so that I can do this, and uh, you take the lid off, and then you have to, um, you have to stab it, and it tastes like nasty cherries, okay, so what we do, what we do here is, I'm trying not to show you all this label, I should have crossed it out, but what we do at the clinic or anywhere you go, we just kind of add some kind of liquid to it just to kind of cut it. Because if you drink this pure, it burns. And this is part of this is part of the, uh, the treatment program. Uh, everybody's like, oh, y'all get methadone for free, blah, blah, blah. No, you got to pay for it. There are programs, <clears throat> there are programs that do pay for it, and those are for homeless people. And I was homeless in the beginning of this, and yes, I did get it paid for, but it got me sober. It got me sober, and it got me off the street, because I was on the street, and uh, I was miserable, and uh, it's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty rough cycle. And uh, <clears throat> I, I was on fentanyl for the last, I don't know, two years of it, and it was a hard one to beat. So look, when I, we don't know where that lid went. There it went. So when you're done with these, I'm going to give you a two-week supply. Here, I'll show you though the inside of the box. I think you have a lock. You have to have a lock. You don't know who you can be around. You don't know who you're going to be around. If you're living by yourself, great. If you're not, if you have roommates, if you have other addicts or any people that are around you and you're trying to get sober, you have to have a lock. And by law, you have to have a lock. Okay? I'll explain that one more in a minute. So look, I take my bottle and then it goes upside down. And notice the bottles are numbered, right? I'm here at the end of my week. So Monday, when I get in there on Monday, uh, I have to replenish this box. They're going to make me take a urine test. Uh, even if I fail that urine test on this one, it'll be two weeks or a week, two weeks for the supply. They'll let me know that I failed it and they'll take everything away from me. 
Okay, I earned this. It took a while to get this way. And that's called sobriety. <laughs> you have to stay sobri stay sober to get these to take home. Um, not every clinic's the same. Not every doctor's the same. Uh, this is part of my treatment program. This is how I'm doing it. Uh, uh, this is a two-week supply. Uh, each one of those is 150 milligrams. And uh, this is the end game of getting sober off of opiates. Uh, and this is something I have to do for probably about a, I, I really want to end this by Christmas, but I don't see it happening because I've been on it for about two years. Uh, I don't want to be on this long term. So anyways, look, so you got to close this up. You don't have to have a super safe, super locked box, whatever you want. I just bought a crappy ammo case, threw some stickers on it because I wanted to. I got stickers. Y'all notice everything I've got. I've got stickers everywhere. And then you got to put your lock on it. This is by law. So that lock has to be on that, that box. When I carry it down to the clinic, when I carry it down to the clinic, if that lock is not on the box, they won't accept this box. They won't accept me. I have to come back the next day, and then I'll lose all my take-homes. Uh, there's a number. That I have a number. I have a number that they have to call me. And I have to have a voicemail stating that I'm that I'm that this is my phone and this is me. And if I don't have that, they could take these away from me. And if I miss that call and I don't show up, and, it's, and you have to show up with this supply. Let's say you're halfway through your supply. You have to show up to the clinic and show them what you got. And you can't take your dose that day. They're going to tell you, you don't take that dose that day. And you're going to go in there and you're going to show them your supply. Because what they're doing is, first of all, they're checking to see if you're selling this crap. And I don't do that. So it's like number two. They're also wanting to make sure that you're taking it right. That's why they're numbered. One, two, three, four, five. You want to take them in accordance. If I was out of order on those and I went to go show up to go to the clinic and those were out of order, first of all, they're going to question me. They might give me a warning, but the second time, they're taking this away from me. Okay? So you have to stay in order. Uh, they want to know that you you care about yourself and you're taking care of yourself and your sobriety is working. So that is the key to this. Um you don't have to have a, have a serious lockbox. Uh, what I do when I carry mine, I don't carry this lolly dolly, lo lolly gagging around. I put mine in a backpack, and then I, uh, and then I uh, take it down to the clinic, and I go every Monday. Um, you have a certain set time you have to do this. Uh, uh, I have a counselor I have to see. Uh, I got a, a, a treatment plan that I go through. This isn't drug order. This is all voluntary. I did this all on my own. I turned my I turned myself in to do this. Uh, I knew I needed the help, and uh, I know the help was out there. And uh, my girlfriend knew how to get the help because she had gone through the same thing. Well, long story, but we were going through the same thing. And uh, but she already knew what to do, and that really helped me out big time. So, anyways. I uh, just wanted to show y'all what that was. That was methadone. That was 150 milligrams, and this is the after. This is the, this is what you get after you get so, you get sober, and uh, this is this is a, this is this is an earned box. I know it looks like crap to y'all, but to me that box right there is gold. It gets me through my life every day. Uh, eventually, I'm going to wean down off of this, and then it's not going to be in my life anymore. That's the main goal. There's going to be people that are probably going to take this the rest of their lives. I only had a five-year run. There's people out here that have maybe 20 years. Uh, I didn't start till late in life. A lot of people have been doing this their whole lives. So, it's different for everybody. But anyways, my name's uh, Glenn. I want you to know that you can get sober off of fentanyl. You can get sober off of opiates and other drugs. It is possible, but the key to it is you got to really, really, really want it. Uh, you got to find that little niche. I don't know how to explain it any other way. You got to find that niche that, that's where you're going to know that you're going to quit and you know that you're, you're rock bottom and you've had enough. Some people just ain't had enough and just love the lifestyle. Uh, I had enough. And I just want you to know it can be done. Fentanyl is, fentanyl is killing this country and you need to stay away from it and uh, just know that it can be beat. It can be beat and I care about it every day and if anybody's got any questions or comments, they're more than welcome to post. If they need to ask me any questions, I got questions. I'm more than willing to answer them for you. And this is Glenn out.